Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome into a special bonus episode of Mind Your Business. I am David Jackson, President and CEO of the Boone Area Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us once again here and for your continued downloads of this content each and every week. We've got a very topical conversation for you this time around as we are joined today by Chuck Mantooth, the President and CEO of what was Appalachian Regional Healthcare System, now UNC Health Appalachian. And we'll talk about that transition here in just a few moments. But first off, Chuck, you're a Longtime friend of the program. Welcome back to Mind Your Business. It's great to see you again, uh, David. I think last time I was just trying sitting here thinking, I think the last time we were talking, we were talking about COVID. So it was really nice to talk about some things other than COVID. So. I was about to say, you you didn't even have to bring that up if you didn't I, want I to. Probably but, but, yeah, word. It's good to reminisce and uh, and remember some of the, the things that we've discussed before. And, you know, we've talked a lot about what I'll call an evolution of Healthcare in the high country here uh, as well. I, I know one of our last conversations, we were talking about the completion of uh, the Schaefer Family Patient Care Tower. That was ahead of schedule at the time uh, that, that we last uh, conversed about it. Now you are into uh, and living in this brand new uh, state-of-the-art medical facility on the Watauga Medical Center campus. Uh, maybe we can start off there. What have you seen operationally and, and been able to feel with this new facility open and and bringing a variety of uses under one umbrella yeah so you know we if you think about the 126 million dollar investment that we made um it took about three years to build that it's hard to kind of realize what the investment is going to be until you actually get people in there and start seeing the results and actually it's been um probably better than I ever thought. Uh, that investment is well worth it. It's a community asset. Um, we moved in the third week in March. And from that period of time, I just looked at some data just, just the other day. There's a, a public survey that, that folks take and it's routed up through Medicare. And uh, in March and April, that's the latest data that we have, it showed us as, as far as rate your hospital, how people rate our hospital and how we compare to other hospitals across the country puts us in the 95th percentile. And to me, that's just a good marker to say that investment was worth it because the community is the is the big winner. It's it's beautiful. Um, you get a if you're up there on the third or fourth floor, you get a look towards um, the west side of, uh, of Boone and it's a beautiful view there. And if you're a golfer, you get to look out on the east side and it's a beautiful, beautiful view there. And then also what we saw is just a lift um, with the staff. The staff just love being in there the aesthetics of it. And we, we've just seen an overall improvement in care. Pretty happy with, with the outcome. You know, one of the things that we addressed uh, back in the construction of that facility and as it was coming out of the ground, you, you continually talked about continuity of care and being able to bring uh, and modernize some of the the longtime services that that ARHS provided. Uh, I can say as an end user being in there for things like blood work or, or just routine procedures, all under one roof. How has that changed the the touch points with the uh, with the entire brand, if you will? Uh, people know where to go. Uh, it's it's almost like a one stop shop for a, a variety of things that used to be spread all over that that end of town, so to speak. They really did, and you know, it's just uh, we 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 really focused on parking. The access is pretty easy. So if we start there, you you come in, you probably walk, you know, at most uh, seventy five yards to come in the facility if you can't walk in you can drop off so it's we, we try to create that convenience first of all and then as you mentioned that one-stop shop you can come in and get your you know, your mammogram um if you have to have surgery it's an easy check-in process you go upstairs and if you know if you are admitted or have to go through the ed um it's it's all right there together and for the staff one of the great things that we've done is that we co-located the, the emergency department right next to diagnostic. If you come in, a lot of times you're gonna have to have an X-ray or CT, things like that, and figure out what's going on. All that's kind of happening behind the scenes so the patient's not in a public area. So you're right, we try to make sure that things were easy to access, easy to get in. And then I think we're gonna talk about the last piece of the puzzle, which is kind of the, the digital aspects of, of checking in and managing that process. But overall, uh, what we try to create was this, this seamless, uh, seamless process. 
Well, as we're we're kind of talking about some updates to other processes, you know, I think that one of the things that that may have gotten kind of uh, lost in the shuffle of all of the the uh, revamping of of what we know uh, healthcare in the high country to be, one of the very first pieces of all of these dominoes to to begin to fall was the start of a, a rural health residency program here uh, several years ago, and now you've got your first class of graduates coming out of that. What will that ultimately mean for those? that are seeking quality health care here in the area to know that now that you've, you've got people that have been trained right here in our own backyard. And, and I think a few of them are even sticking around. Yeah. And one of the things that I think we're all, we've, I'm pretty proud of the board for always taking a, you know, a look at are the things that we could do to improve life and access to care in a rural area. And one of the basics is just good primary care and having access to that. It's, it's documented. It, it's hard to find a doctor in rural areas. It's hard to attract doctors to come to rural areas. So one of the things that we invested in a few years ago, uh, actually three years ago, was an investment in a residency program. We just graduated our first class of the first four that graduated. Two are staying in, uh, employed with us. One is going to be a hospitalist. One is going to go out to Avery County and work. One is going up to Massachusetts to be closer to home. And one is going on to be uh, uh, what's called an extra year of training, sports medicine uh, training. That's a great story, by the way. His name is Jeb Fox. He grew up here, went to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, came back for his residency program, is going to do the extra fellowship. And then hopefully we can get him to plant his roots back here. I think that's what he's going to do. So that's just a real good success story. If we train him um, we, and we graduate him and hopefully we can keep him here to have better access to primary care. Well, and, and you also uh, hear a lot of conversation in the state right now. You mentioned the the recruiting difficulties that you have in, in rural medicine, but I think what gets lost sometimes is the relationships that get built there. And especially in a community like this, you mentioned somebody that, that's got roots in the area trying to come back here. That stuff matters. That that matters when people are making healthcare decisions. And that seems to be something that you all have prioritized for years and years. And, and this is just another example of that. Yeah, it is. A, I think we've we've kind of found a little secret sauce here, and it's it's working pretty good. But we're always looking for ways to improve on that. Well, speaking of other improvements, uh, you know, we we've heard a lot here in the last few days about uh, a change in the overall branding of the system. This is not necessarily a new development in that uh, you know you're uh, you you entered into an agreement with UNC Health on a more technical side uh, uh, a while back. Uh, that that would revolutionize the records keeping process. And now we see a, a full brand integration that we'll see Appalachian Regional Healthcare System become UNC Health Appalachian. Can you kind of walk us through what led to this point and, and what this means overall for the operation of the system? Yeah, David. So if we, you know, if we go all the way back to our planning uh, four years ago, we did some really good intense strategic planning. We looked at kind of what our position was going to be like in the future, five and 10 years out. And uh, at that point in time, we realized that we needed a partner and we've talked about that in the past and to get, you know, the things that we really needed from a partner was just access to scale and um, and then also a, a good, robust um, what we call information technology system. And I'll, I'll use the word epic for that. And we felt like that was the best if we could go and partner with someone and get that. That was going to be the best thing, I think, for this community. So fast forward up until today. Um, you know, we, we made our partnership uh, decision about a year and a half ago that that was kicked off around July of last year. So we're about 13 months into that. And uh, as part of that process, what UNC wanted to do was to create one uniform brand. And one of their values is one great team. And, and we bought into that. We, we realized that we're part of 19 other network hospitals across the state of North Carolina that want to have similar quality, similar processes. So when a patient goes to any one of those facilities, they know what they're getting. It's going to be a standard process. The foundation for that is the information um, technology or ISD or EPIC. And um, so that there's the reason for the brand change. Um, I, I've used this a few times. The state motto of North Carolina is to be rather than to seem. So we try to time the, the change in our brand for folks to realize that there's something underneath that change in the brand and what they're going to experience is going to be much better access, much better communication levels with their physician, their provider, a much easier process with billing, 
all of those things that can be had through just a more efficient um, information technology system. And that will go live September 30th. And we're going to do a big campaign about we want you folks to sign up what's called my chart. And that's once you load that on your phone, once you have access to that on your computer, that's going to be our main way of communicating with you. And it should have just improved that communication and just ease of operation. So we're, we're looking forward to that September 30th. And we want to re really make sure that when we change that brand, people feel actually something different. And it is part of something larger across the state of North Carolina. You know, I think the the immediate direction that that some of it, especially our longtime residents will go in a, a situation like this is, uh, you know, are my providers going to change or the the staff members that that I'm used to seeing when I go and interact with the various practices, mm -hmm. are, are they going to change? Is there anything uh, out uh, from the operational side that that will be different now that there's a, a new logo on the door? Yeah, no, no change in providers. Uh, actually, it's 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 all if you look at pros and cons, it's really no cons and all pros because it's the same folks. It's better access, better communication, uh, more access as far as appointments, things like that. that. Those are all things that we're working on. So really, it's it's all pros. I think the only thing maybe we would like want to address and we'll, we'll have to do a good job after this to get the word out is that when folks get a bill after um, September 30th, for any services here, it will say UNC Health on it. And, you know, there may be some confusion where people say, wait a second, I didn't go to UNC. I went to, you know, I went to Boone and we want to make sure that over time that that will become a little bit easier, but uh, that will be the only change that they probably will see. Everything else is going to be very, very positive. I was about to say Duke fans might just refuse to pay altogether. <laughs> I, I don't know how you're going to, you're going to work that, but we'll see. Maybe, maybe if App State beats Carolina in football, we can get some sort of billing deferment or something. Uh, like I'm, I would actually like that. I yeah. Like they, that. You can work on that in the next yeah. month or so. Um, you know, one of the things you mentioned too, about, uh, about the care side of this and, and you touched on it with the expansion of a broader network. Um, you know, the, the healthcare system here has evolved to the point where you can get many of the, I'll call them more standard uh, procedures done here. Uh, your, your investment in cardiac care, uh, cancer uh, care, uh, those things are just at the top of the list, but there are several things that have, have gone on. Uh, ortho, uh, another revolutionary area. But, but with this alliance now, do you foresee a situation where people that need maybe that, that next level that, that requires going off the mountain to get something is is that where this system gets uh, to be uh, maybe even more efficient where you're aligned with providers down the mountain that that you're already kind of with so to speak uh, and maybe makes that process a little bit quicker for people to receive the treatment that they need yeah that, that's great that you know david i think we've kind of looked at this in three segments one is do the planning and then actually we, we struck the deal with unc and then let's do the integration work and then now phase, what I call phase three right now, is just the fun stuff. Now you can say, okay, we have this foundation, foundational relationship. What are some of the things we can do? We're already, you know, these are uh, discussions that we're having actively. I don't, we don't have any, any formal plans to do, but let me just tell you a little bit about the possibilities. So we've got a, a, a highly ranked academic medical center three hours away. Um, so you have that thought process. Then we have some uh, density created right here in this area with like, like partners, like-minded partners with UNC Health uh, Caldwell and then UNC Health Blue Ridge just to our south. We've got about five contiguous counties that can really start putting our heads together and say, okay, what can we do to bring services that maybe each of us couldn't do on our own, but by working together? Let me just, I, no promises here, but let me just tell you some things that were, I constantly hear stuff about endocrinology, uh, maybe even a, a bump up on heart care around taking care of more of the electrical side of the heart, things that we can do that really we couldn't have done if we weren't having these discussions regionally or in, you know, in concert with UNC Health across the system. So those things are, are the fun stuff, but we're building on the foundation that we've created. And I, I think over the next two to three years, the, the public is going to see some of the benefit of that just in the, the bringing those services here locally where they would probably have to drive several hours uh, before. I, I know that there's a, another kind of brewing storyline within the healthcare space. And, and we've talked a lot about what the ramifications for this would be uh, once it comes into place. Do you have any further updates on what Medicaid expansion looks like, uh, you know, timing this up with a, a resource mechanism that is strengthening 
uh, dollars that could potentially uh, flow to families that have not been able to to recognize uh, regular and quality health care as part of their daily regimen? Do you see all of these things stacking up from a timing perspective to really benefit what is available here in this community? Yeah, that, that's one of the things that you know we've, we uh, UNC and I personally have spent a lot of time trying to make sure that we um, got Medicaid expansion. And, you know, it feels like we're there. It uh, feels like we scored the touchdown, but it's under review, but we feel like we've got a good chance of this thing going through. So, you know, obviously, if you're following the news, the timing of that's um, uh, a little bit debatable, but I, I feel like by the fall, we'll see that. And, and that will, over time, I think we'll just start to see it increase the benefit and the access, getting folks signed up. But, you know, one of the things that um, it, you think about Medicaid expansion, you think, well, who are these people? A lot of them are, are single men in their, you know, 20s to, to mid 40s that are, say, working a construction job or working for an employer that doesn't provide insurance, and it's really tough. We want to give access to those folks. Um, you know, if we can get have good access to primary care, they have good access to insurance, we can be a partner in their health care journey, um, and they have a means to pay for that, that's just going to, I think, overall, it's going to improve the health of our community. So we're really excited about that. I think the, the benefits are going to take, you know, a few years to kind of flush out, but it you know, where we used to worry about people um, coming in or delaying care because they couldn't pay for it, we're going to see a lot of that go away. And that's that's a major, major lift for the state of North Carolina and for the high country. Final uh, question for you here. You know, I, I think, again, you, you look back at the totality of everything that has come together. Um, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, down on the eastern side of the state, there was a rural hospital that that closed its doors. Uh, rural health care is still very much um, unstable in many, many communities, not only throughout our state, but throughout the country. Uh, all of the things that we have talked about today seem to have, have re-solidified the foundation. So with that said, what do you think... Um, the, the possibilities are for for continued evolution of healthcare uh, and and healthcare access here in the high country. What what does this look like five years from now? That you've got a new patient care tower, you've got grown facilities, you've got a new partner, you've got better IT. What's the end goal here? Yeah, you know, David, that's a that's a great question. Um, I, just a few years ago, um, I was concerned about the future of of you know medicine and, and rural rural areas, how did, how do we make sure it's good quality for one, number two, good access. And with all the things, the partnership with UNC Health, the investments that we've made, um, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on the high country and what we're able to do up here. I, I do think that we've carved out a little because the, the, obviously the presence of Appalachian State University, um, it's a growing area. Um, I, I think new facilities, new systems that, to work with, I'm pretty excited. There's still going to be challenges ahead, but I, I do feel like those things are going to be easier for us than we can, you know, be somewhat of a beacon in Western North Carolina and maybe do some creative things that we can share with others to, to maybe have an overall lift across, um, across North Carolina and, and rural medicine. But I'm pretty excited about our future. Um, I, it's good to get some of these investments behind us and start, you know, realizing driving the new car when we've saved our money. Now we bought the car. Now it's time to drive it and, and enjoy it. So I, I'm, pr I'm pretty excited about our future. Well, speaking of the shiny new thing, you've got a chance to come and check that out for yourself on August 29th, a ribbon cutting at the new Schaefer Family Patient Care Tower. Uh, that'll go on from five to six, a ribbon cutting in the parking lot at 530. Chuck Mantooth will be speaking. I, I don't know if you're going to say some of the same stuff or we're getting all new material from you for that event. Uh, it, you probably never know. It could be different. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Well, this is a, an event that's open to the public uh, because it's an active and working hospital. No tours of the inside stuff, but you'll get a chance to see outside and the the uh, revolutionary look to the Watauga Medical Center campus. I can say uh, again, as an end user, uh, everything that has been laid out in there seems to to work by design very well from the patient's perspective, at least. I can speak to that. Uh, so it'll be great to, to get the community out there to celebrate what is a uh, a very important achievement for our uh, healthcare uh, system here in the area and certainly something that we'll all benefit from. So look forward to seeing you on the 29th. Uh, Chuck, we always appreciate your time and your insight. Uh, best of luck to you and your team as you continue on this transition. And we look forward to talking about it again more in the future. Thanks. Thanks for doing what you do, David. 
All right. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Mind Your Business presented by Appalachian Commercial Real Estate and Appalachian Regional Healthcare System. Find more information online at boonchamber.com.